Hello, what is going on guys? Jordan here back with another tutorial video. I know it's been a little while, but I decided I was going to finally go ahead and make a tutorial for how to reach homebrew on Ocarina of Time hacks, aka OOT hacks. This will work on versions 11.1 .1 and 11.2, and it should work on versions earlier, but I just have confirmed that it's worked on these ones so far. So, in order to make this work, first of all, you need, of course, a physical copy. You can't really see it, but a physical copy of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. And by the way, if you're getting the Black Friday one that came out today, uh, the or yesterday, whatever Black Friday was, the uh, Nintendo Selects version, that works too. That's been verified to work because it's the same cartridge, just a different box. So, Zelda, get that taken care of. You also need, of course, a Power Action, uh, or excuse me, an Action Replay Power Saves Pro, or a regular Action Replay Power Save works. Um, there's also a Pokemon one, apparently. I don't know if that one works. I haven't been confirmed on that. So but you're pretty much safe with Power Saves Pro. So you need uh, Power Saves Pro, you need the game, you need a 3DS, of course, and you need some other software, which I'll show you how to get as we go. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so before we get started, there's a few pieces of software that you need to have downloaded and installed before uh, you can take care of this. Number one, obviously you need to have your, pay your uh, Power Saves themselves. You need to actually have the physical uh, device, which I hope you guys have bought prior to this or you already had it lying around. If you did, cool. You don't need to worry about that. If not, go ahead and get one. You, you need to do it to, to use to do this method. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon, I think, something like that. You can get them real cheap. Um, so that's necessary. Uh, at the same time, when you think about it in, in terms of how expensive it is to get this method working, this is a game method that takes a $20 piece of software, or a $20 piece of hardware, excuse me, and a $20 game. So it's 40 bucks as opposed to like Cubic Ninja, which is in the 70 or 80 range, and Freaky Hacks, which is probably in the 50 range right about now. Uh, because Ocarina of Time is a very common game, that game is not bound to go way up in price because of OOT hacks. Plus, OOT hacks has been working for ages now, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, so you need to have a uh, archive extractor folder or a file such as WinRAR. Uh, you need to have. You can go right here. The, it's, it's in the description below. The the link is rarlab.com/download, and you want to download the 32 or the 64-bit version or the Mac version, depending on what OS you are using. Get that taken care of. Uh, so you can, you know, extract files as need be. Uh, you also need to go to this site, which is the uh, Power Saves website. If you if, if you're just using uh, Power Saves for the first time, the 3DS software can be found here uh, to get that working. That's in the description as well. It is uh, Power Saves 3DS dot maximum memory dot com. That's a British website because this is a British tool. So that, and then the final thing you need is. Uh, the OOT hack starter kit and it's really just the regular starter kit and I've combined the files for OOT hacks as well as one for JKSV which is a save editor which I'll go over in a later video uh, more a PK hex video but I just put it there for convenience so you don't have to download uh, things twice so that's there so after you download the Dropbox link that I had put in the description below you should have a folder folder that looks something like this it's the uh, Ocarina of Time hacks sample 91516 um, which is it's an outdated uh, OOT hacks, but it still works on the most current firmware. Uh, so that's what we're going to be going with. But in the version that I have, you should have the actual sample file, which has all of the uh, boot.3dsx and all the files for 3ds that you need should have ready to go. Basically, the starter kit that's on the main website, uh, as well as JKSV, which is the or JKSV, which is the um, uh, is the save file editor that I told you about a second ago. So that is there. And next up, you're gonna want to have the save image and the save image power saves folders, which are important here. They should have two folders that look like this. Uh, you don't really care about save image so much. It's, it's really if you wanted to try and reconstruct a correct save, if you corrupt, but if you backed up your file, you shouldn't have this problem anyway. So disregard that for the moment. Um, next up, you need to have uh, your power save software ready to go and it should look something like this. So as you can see here, I have two files. I'm gonna take this down for a second here. I have two files. I'm going to make this a little bigger for you. I have two files here. This one is one that I backed up, which is just my Legend of Zelda save. And to do that, you just you just click on any any space and you just click back up and it'll try to back up uh, from your current save point with uh, your Legend of Zelda cartridge that you have inside your power save. So when you do that, that's all good to go. And in my case, I made two. One I want as my backup for today's date. And the other one I want as the one I'm going to work on for homebrew. So it's important right now that you just have two files. Uh, one that you're going to work on and one that you're going to keep as normal if you ever want to return to the save point that you had before. 
Um, it's recommended that even if you have a brand new Zelda game that you create a save, like you just create a file, just say start, uh, or just have a, a name created. Don't actually start it, but then just so you can back that up so there's a placeholder to back up. You kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, so let me take this down and go back in here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this folder right here, which has the 3DS, all these. You're just going to want to drag all of this, and you're just going to want to put that directly onto your SD card. So in my case, it would be if I just took all of these and just dragged them straight to my uh, SD card and just stuck them right there. Now, I don't really need them because I already have them working, uh, so I don't need to worry about that right this second. But anyway, once you have that taken care of, you've got your uh, files on, you've got your power saves ready with your backed up data. Now is the part where we're actually going to edit said power saves here in order to get that uh, working. So one more second, I'm just gonna pull up the, all right, this is the power saves file right here. This is folder is where your power save software saves. And you can take a look at this and look at it later. As you can see here, it's clearly got two different versions of my files here. Those are the two backups that I have for any game. And I obviously just have the two, so they're right there ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go back into my file here and we're gonna go into save images power saves and it really doesn't matter which one you do It's just that if one doesn't work try and load the other kind of thing. There really is no difference between these They're just slightly modified versions um, So what you're gonna do is you're going to grab the bin file that corresponds with your system and your uh, your market or your continent so there's Europe, Japan, and USA. In my case, I'm obviously grabbing USA because I'm an American and I'm on a new 3DS. So I'm looking for the newest payload that they have for the new 3DS, which in this case should be the one with the highest number right here, uh, N3DSU 26624. If you're not on an N3DS, you wanna grab the post five ones here. So you would grab this one here if you're on an old 3DS or a 2DS. So I'm just gonna take this file right here. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna close this out right here. I'm gonna go back over here to this file. So what you can do is you can just click options here and it'll pull it up. I'm not gonna pull it up because it displays my license key and I don't really wanna do that. Um, but just know that that will give you the save location for uh, your files there. So that's something that you can do. Um, so back into the power saves folder, what you wanna do is you want to simply save uh, or you wanna drop it right in here and you're going to grab this name right here you can just press f2 to grab the file name you're going to copy it and then you're just going to name it whatever the heck you want because it's not used anymore and you're going to take this file right here the one that you copied in you're going to rename it you're just going to paste in that old file what you do is what you're doing is you're taking the uh, hack bin you're taking the hacked uh, payload and you're just copying over the save file that exists and now we're going to have a we're creating a fake save file that the ocarina of time uh, will recognize so you've got that going for you um after you do that, I recommend that you go ahead and close out of your go and close out of your homebrew or not your homebrew software. Close out of your PowerSafe software and load it back up, just so you know that it works. Okay, so if you did everything right, then your uh, PowerSafe software should look something like this, where you see your backup and you see a second file here. In my case, it's or in your case, it should be renamed after the uh, bin file that you entered in, and you should just be able to go in and click on it and rename it Homebrew. I already did. That's why it's says Homebrew. So once you do that, you're going to want to click Homebrew, click Restore. It's going to ask, do you want to restore this backup? You say yes. It's going to attempt to read and write to the cartridge and modify it for you, so you have that going. Once you've done that, you are free to take out your SD card and your um, and your cartridge that you're using, and get that set up. So I'm going to take this out really quick here and slot it in, slot it in my DS here. So it should look something like this. We've got the DS software right here, ready to go. And once you enter it in, you should notice that you should have a file that is not uh, correct, it does not belong there. It doesn't look like it belongs there, but it does, trust me. So you hit start and it should load a hacks file like this. So you're just gonna open it on up. If you did everything right, all you have to do is wait for link to load up his health bar right here and you're gonna press A and it should boot straight into the homebrew method or straight into the homebrew channel, excuse me. Um, and there we are. So we are now in the homebrew channels. You can see here everything is in properly exactly how we wanted it. If you did it wrong, if you're getting boot back to memory, if you're getting errors or anything like that, you didn't follow the instructions properly. Um, and I would just say, go back and check, see what you did wrong. If it's really being persistent with you, uh, just go ahead and go back to the files that you had 
uh, I believe it's this one right here. So go back and just try the other card dids folder here and see if that gives you any luck because both of them should be okay to work, but there's some slight differences, that some nuances that might make uh, something work. Uh, whereas it didn't before. But anyway, that's about it for this tutorial. Please hit that thumbs up down below if you were able to get it set up properly. And if you, you were, go ahead and leave a comment, uh, either with questions if you weren't able to get it set up or go feel free to help others if they, were able to, if they weren't able to get in and you were. So with that in mind, this will be the end of this tutorial. I've got another one coming up. It's gonna be PK Hex uh, updated for Sun and Moon. So if you've got Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, I'll be helping you get that. So get hyped for that. Subscribe to this channel if you're looking forward to that video. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. This is Joe signing out. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.